NextGen is a term that's been floating around for many years, but it's a term that the Federal Aviation Administration has put out for the next generation uh, system that they want to develop for air traffic. So it includes everything from upgrades to weather information, uh, flight control, both in flight, um, on the ground, uh, out over oceans. Uh, it's really the next phase in uh, how we're going to monitor where aircraft are um, and how we're going to direct them and get them from location A to location B. So NCAR is playing uh, a leading role in a lot of the weather, uh, particularly the ground de-icing, the in-flight icing, turbulence, uh, ceiling visibility, um, and even volcanic ash uh, to some degree, because that obviously is a problem up in Alaska and places like that. Um, so a lot of our research is focused on what capabilities do we have now and what capabilities can we build in the near term that's going to enhance operations, uh, both safety and efficiency at airports within the next 10 to 15 years. There's an interesting substance that's very common in the atmosphere and on the planet Earth, and it's super cooled liquid water. Clouds in the atmosphere and precipitation in the atmosphere uh, can be made up of ice crystals or liquid water at temperatures above or below zero degrees. And what happens when an airplane flies through a cloud or through freezing rain or freezing drizzle is that airplane surface is at a temperature below zero. The water wants to freeze, but it needs a surface on which to freeze. It doesn't freeze well in the free atmosphere. And so it collides with the airplane, or the airplane collides with the drops, and bingo, you get the drops freezing onto the airframe. This is a problem. The reason it's a problem is because engineers take great pains to design airfoils, the shapes of the wings, to fly very efficiently, to provide lift to the airplane, and decrease the drag so the engines can push the airplane through the air and the airplane can fly. Well, when drops freeze onto that wing, it does two things. It, dis it, it changes the shape of that wing from what the engineer designed it to be, and it changes the texture, so it messes up the airflow around the wing. And you lose the lift and you increase the drag. You need more power. Eventually, you run out of excess power, and the plane just doesn't stay in the sky very well. Planes are a bit more vulnerable at takeoff and landing to getting iced up and having problems, uh, mainly because they're closer to the ground. If something happens, you don't have room for error. You know, if your altitude suddenly drops, there's the ground. Also, in the case of takeoff, uh, you need all the lift you can get. You're leaving the surface, and it becomes very critical to the airplane. A tiny bit of loss of lift that can just happen from having snow stick to the wings which is a different topic, uh, that can uh, produce large decreases in the lift available and the plane might not be able to take off. One of the uh, reasons that we got into aircraft de-icing in the first place was um, obviously there was a need to understand better the processes that lead to aircraft de-icing. Um, how long is that de-icing fluid going to be good once you apply it to your aircraft wing? So we came in with the research uh, to try to answer that question and one of the products that we developed was a product called Check Time. It uses a combination of real-time precipitation rates from precipitation gauges that we put around the airport and air temperature. And so from those, we can determine how quickly the snow is falling or the freezing rain or whatever the precipitation is. Uh, we know what our air temperature is and we can tell a pilot for these given rates and air temperatures, we expect that your aircraft de-icing fluid is going to last for a half an hour. 45 minutes, um, however long that may be. And that gives pilots a time to plan then. Um, if they know they're going to be on the ground longer than that, then they're going to have to think about going back and getting re-de-iced. Or if they have a chance, they can try to get off the ground much quicker so that they don't have to go back and get re-de-iced. Well, we tend to think of winter as the time when we're most likely to be impacted by the weather when we fly. But summertime can present obstacles to flying as well. Uh, for example, we're all aware of large thunderstorm activity in the summer. Uh, this can cause significant turbulence that uh, flyers definitely want to avoid. And indeed, there are guidelines for pilots to avoid the most severe uh, areas of, of convection. A recently recognized weather hazard to aviation is the ingest of very small ice crystals into jet engines. 
It's become apparent in the past decade or so that pilots flying through clouds that appear to be innocuous and don't show any significant returns on the pilot's radar can actually have a large number of small ice crystals that could be ingested into the engine and cause the engine to shut down. Um, obviously, this is a potentially hazardous situation, and the FAA and aircraft industry are actively researching uh, what sorts of clouds pose this sort of hazard.